Today I want to talk about Royal, the best all metal carpet cleaner money can buy. Oh wait, not that one. <laughs> Let's talk about the PowerCast. You know, if it was the early 2000s and you walked into a vacuum dealer, it may have looked something like this with a bunch of Royal machines. They had two different bypass motor Royals available in portable vacuums. Of course, they had the Royal Canister and the Royal Central Vacuum. Royal was hemorrhaging money and they were attempting to try to diversify to save the company and they didn't know which direction to go and they needed a new vacuum to save their ass. Unfortunately, the Royal PowerCast was no Jesus Christa. It was a prototype that was rushed out so fast they couldn't even get it UL approved without putting a GFI on the cord. This is perhaps the only vacuum cleaner I can think of that has a GFI on the cord. I can think of plenty of extractors, uh, but this is the only vacuum cleaner that comes to mind, uh, at least here in the US. So that was so done so they could rush it out and get it to market faster. While we're on the subject of the cord, there is, of course, your on-off switch and your carpet bare floor switch. That's all familiar to us now. There is this button, which dumps the cord, and the cord hook is cast aluminum, or maybe some other scrap metal, it's hard to say. Um, and it's two position locking. Uh, it doesn't lock in the upright position, it flops around, but it has a, this position to wind it, this position to release the cord. So this has the handle and you can see where the plastic dip has just worn off. Now I am the third owner of this Royal and I know that because it's been owned exclusively by vacuum collectors. That's right, the same people who take really, really good care of vacuums. This is what's happened to the handle. And the handle is a two-piece cast aluminum, pop metal, mystery metal, might be lead, uh, for all we know, uh, material. And you can see it's just rubbed off there. What is cool is you have your carpet bare floor switch and your on-off switch right there. Now, here's where things get weird. You have a It really feels plastic to me. I'm pretty sure it's plastic down there. We have Plastidip grips on this machine, which have now decomposed on the machine. And then, of course, we have our tool port right here. I wonder how many people back in the day went to pick one of these up and realized that wasn't a carrying handle the hard way, dropping this 24-pound machine down the stairs. So I guess the only way really to carry it is right here, which is super awkward. Going to the rear of the machine, you have two pedals. One is a handle release, that's pretty standard. The other is a height adjustment. So this is the ratchet mechanism for the height adjustment. And it's like everything else on this machine, it was attempted to be overbuilt, but again, wrong materials, wrong execution uh, of the machine. Now the as the name implies, it actually is power cast. This part, this part, are cast aluminum. The bag housing's plastic. Uh, there is a mixture of materials here done in probably the worst way possible as far as engineering is concerned. This really was a prototype that left way too early. Now, the wheels were made out of a very brittle material, so I did have to replace them. That's why they are different. But they originally were a rubber coated wheel, slightly different than the typical Royal wheel. And just for comparison, you can see your typical metal upright royal, as they're often referred to, next to the power cast. Well, that's definitely not happening. This thing is too big of a behemoth to get under. You can kind of get under with the corner of it, but as soon as you get here, you are just blocked. It is not meant to get low. Well, we have our usual pickup test here. We have our breakfast cereal, cat litter, flour, and dog hair. Let's see how the Royal PowerCast does with this mess. Also, we're using the studio microphone, shotgun microphone, so this is an accurate sound representation of the machine as well. Well, 
sure looks like it made short work of that. A little bit of animal hair on the side. Uh, not on that side. That's interesting because it is a symmetrical cleaning head and did snow plow a piece of breakfast cereal on the side. Other than that, it cleaned up everything really well, especially considering this machine is 18 years old. We're going to do a pickup test on hard floor, and I'm actually on tile. It looks like wood, but I'm actually on tile because the bottom of this isn't exactly hard floor friendly, and I don't want to scratch my wood. So let's give it a go with the brush roller off and the machine all the way down. Well, we can see that it left some flour behind. <laughs> basically just snow plowed all the cat litter around. Um, <laughs> it got some of the breakfast cereal, but not a lot of it. Uh, it did seem to pick up the hair, though it got stuck in the roller, that's typical. And, I mean, really look at the bottom of this. <laughs> this is some sort of metal. This is the exact opposite of hard floor friendly, even though you can stop the brush roller. They're, they're, again, this was more of a prototype. They rushed into production. They weren't thinking of hard floors or anything like that. Now, a lot of people in the vacuum cleaner community really like this machine, and this is considered probably one of the best clean uprights uh, that was ever made. I'm not sure I really agree with that opinion. It certainly is powerful. It does, you know, it does have overly adequate agitation and a lot of airflow for a bypass machine of its time. Well, it's definitely no central vacuum or Mila. Uh, you can dispute the power, whether it's more or less than whatever your favorite machine is, but it is powerful and that's due to two reasons. Let's get into that. So the, ooh, hot. Uh, so just so you know, I've been running this, uh, the outside of the power cast gets hot enough to the touch that it might not actually burn you. The brush roller is steel with stiffeners uh, on interchangeable brush bristles. Again, those bristles are no longer available like every other part on this machine. It's got a brush roller that's center driven. I keep touching the hot part. Uh, by a geared belt. And these geared belts, I would see them break back in the day. So this uh, was kind of a weak link. The base plate, even though it is painted, it's actually steel of some sort. And then again, the suction is going through the front. I'll show you that in a minute. You, I want you to just take a look at this overbuilt height adjustment. Uh, no particular reason they did that. Again, there's a bunch of cast, um, presumably some sort of aluminum alloy. It's, it's definitely not pure looking at it. It's, it's questionable. Uh, back here on the machine, this plastic part is a heat shield, so you don't burn your carpet from the motor. That's why that's there. Very strange. Again, everything's exposed. It's very, it's very unfinished. And there's a lot of stuff that's made out of cast metal that doesn't need to be. Uh, it really is strange that this is what came to be, and they thought this was going to be their Jesus Christa of a machine in terms of it was going to save oil. Now let's talk about... Uh, well, it doesn't really get low, but let's talk about this hose. This hose is about two inches in diameter, maybe an inch, uh, three quarters. It's wide, it's very wide, and that acc accommodates for a lot of airflow going to the center of the nozzle, which helps it clean particularly well. Now, going right up to there is this guy. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the tools for this machine. They weren't common. A lot of people didn't buy them. Uh, but let me show you what was in the back. This is the exhaust filter. There was room for a HEPA filter. And you need to unlock four screws to get to that. Like, literally remove four screws to get to that. The cover is this multifaceted piece that, for some reason, has a chrome cap, uh, even though it's plastic. 
And these were available in black, red, and blue. Blue being the base model without the exhaust HEPA filter. The bag choice of this, again, they would give people Dirt Devil bags. I've heard rumors that these were powerful enough they would burst their bags. It's never had a Dirt Devil bag in there. It has a Type W bag. Uh, Recar Type W bag fits in there very well and is a lot more free or flowing. You can also use a Hoover Type Y HEPA as well. And this is just the thing from the bag. The pre-motor filter is screwed in place as well. Again, very strange design decisions. I don't know why or how it came to be like that. You know, if somebody watching these videos worked for Royal, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to do an interview. Because this, this is a strange ass machine. Um, of course, the, the cover isn't hinged. It's just independent. This was common at the time, but again, it adds to the quirkiness of the machine now. The whole thing is just overly massive. Um, I guess the last control to talk about is there is a brush roller reset in the front. Um, I guess if you got it jammed on something, I'm not gonna test that out uh, with the age of the machine. I wanna show how much weight is actually in your hand. Almost 10 pounds when you're moving it. And that's with the machine off. Um, I don't know what it's like when I turn it on. <laughs> So it's about 12 pounds when it's on to move it. Uh, that's considerably heavy, too heavy for most people uh, to move around. So that's one of the reasons why they killed it. Now, that leads me to the reason of how this came to be in my possession and probably just about everybody who's had one. These machines did not sell well. Vacuum shops had trouble selling them. They were supposed to be their top end machine. And this was offered for sale at the same time machines like the SIBO Felix, the X4 had just come out for SIBO. You had the Recar Tandem Air machines, which I, I'm, I'm curious to see which one of those is more powerful once I get a hose for one of these. Oh, you just saw that fall off right there, right there. That's a piece of the rubber handle. Again, it's just biodegrading on, on the thing. Um, and every time I use it, I have to can wash my hands. It's just got sticky hiss all over. Horrible, horrible rubber choice. Um, oh, as I was saying, so they really couldn't sell it because there were vacuums that were better from every manufacturer. Heck, you know, you could get a self-propelled Hoover wind tunnel that does everything this does um, and had a poor tool. So why would you buy this? Uh, it was pushed to you on a salesperson or you got it on discount. So these machines could be had under $100 below cost when they were closing these machines out. Again, this is after Royal had shut the project down. They couldn't afford to make them. And Royal was hemorrhaging money. I mean, the, the, they were on the ER table, missing all their limbs, bleeding out, hemorrhaging money. And at that point, well, what happens when an American company is hemorrhaging money? Well, Either somebody buys them or they go out of business. And TTI ended up buying them. Um, and, you know, Royal wasn't really a name that resonated with customers anymore. It wasn't a name associated with anything. But they wanted the Dirt Devil name, which is why they bought them. So they did the deal. Um, they continued making other Royal products, metal uprights, rebranding Hoovers, uh, right until they killed the Royal name off. Uh, when they killed the royal name off was about 2016-ish, maybe 2015, um, depending on who you ask or what the supply was. But that's about when they killed the royal name off. So this was kind of the last American-designed, American-made royal product before the Chinese bought them and they became their own thing. Um, and it's it's a beast. And it's, I love it, it's quirky. If Doug DeMero was in here, he would, this would be you know an hour long video of all the quirks and features, I'm not gonna do that. But I hope you have enjoyed what I have showed you of my Royal Power Cast. Big thank you to Bill for supplying this and Mr. Reggie for bringing it across country for me to review. This machine has traveled thousands of miles to get here. It came from Missouri, so I do appreciate that. 
If you want to support the channel, there's links in the description to our Patreon page and other things. Our Patreon supporters do get exclusive content, so that's something to keep in mind if you just can't wait or you want to see more performance reviews, that's where to see it. Check us out on our other publishers and have yourself a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.